Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is actually a series of tutorials on uh, Python hacks, wherein I'll be telling you guys some interesting concepts that you can do with Python. Okay, and in today's tutorial, I'll be explaining you guys how to run R programming inside your IPython notebooks. Um, kind of sounds a little funny or maybe it sounds a bit strange or awkward, but it's very simple. It's not that difficult and uh, I'll explain you guys what's happening. now. For those of you guys who haven't heard about IPython Notebooks, let me give you guys a small introduction. Now, IPython Notebook is actually uh, is actually a software, or you can say a module, whichever, whichever. It's actually made from uh, four programming languages, if I'm right. We don't, I don't call them. I mean, it's I'm not sure whether programming language is correct because some of them are scripting, some of them are you know markup languages, some of them like that. Okay, anyway. Let's not go into t in that details. Hyperthon notebook is made using um, a JSON, a JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Using these four languages, okay. Uh, what it, what I what you get is that you get a notebook, which is quite useful and handy that you can run in your web browser. And you can run in your web browser, and uh, they provide a. Uh, a platform in which you can uh, call some programming language languages as a kernel and run it. Uh, f uh, instead of me explaining guys how it is, let me show you guys a demo and you guys will understand nicely. Now what I have here is that I have uh, three IPython notebooks open over here. One is for my Fortran, one is my uh, just uh, a random notes, I uh, some notes I took some time ago and some another notebook just for documentation. The thing is, what the advantage is iPython notebooks is that you have you have cells through which you can enter code uh, in batches and then get the output printed immediately. You can have your plots embedded in the same in the console itself directly. Uh, you can write note. You can write notes. You can write notes uh, and, and contents with headings, uh, with highlights, highlights for uh, text. I mean web web links. You can use uh, you can use some syntax highlighting for your for your program codes if you want. You can write contents in paragraph. You can write contents in bullets like that. If that if that is not the only case, you can also write mathematical notations in proper in in proper uh, not prop in a proper manner using the using LaTeX like notations over here. And that's not the only thing. If you uh, if you guys notice. I'm not sure whether you guys notice properly. You also have the option to, you know, present all your present your notebook and your file not present your notebook to uh, to others as in the form of a slideshow or a presentation. If this is not sufficient. If this is not sufficient, uh, you can download this as a Python file or a HTML file or a Markdown file or a restructured text or as a PDF or a PDF. Okay, if you have LaTeX installed in your in, in, in your system. Other than that, you have the option to open. Uh, you have the option to open new kernels. Like if I go over here, I can I can type a new I can type a new text folder, terminal, IPython ter uh, terminal, and whatnot. There are all of these are all of these are possible. Now that's the advantage you get with IPython notebooks. You have a nice program or a software uh, uh, that's running in your web browser, the, the running in your web browser that through which you can write your code, document it, save it, and you can also uh, you can you can even present it. That's this will be really handy if you guys start using it. You'll find it really useful too. Now here's the thing. Now. This is not restricted to Python alone. You can in, you can use other programming languages in this manner as well. Okay. Now, how do I do? How do we do about with it? It's very simple. Now, uh, JSON, uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS are the four languages that have been used to make IPython IPython notebooks. Okay. What they do is they just give you a framework and through which you can call uh, Python kernels inside it and uh, run it. That's how it goes. Okay. So what happens is that uh, instead of IPython, instead of Python, you can call some other language as well. For that, you need two things. You need to have that programming language installed in your system. Second, some kind of uh, Python-based kernel, Python-based a little language, not a language, Python-based program, which kinds of calls this other languages into it. Now, let's see. 
how do we go about with it it's simple now what you need is that you just have to have install something called as an i uh, an r kernel to install uh, to call uh, r programs ins inside your python ipython notebooks okay for that these are the procedures first step is that you have to have you have to install r programming language in your laptop or your in your computer if that is working fine and then uh, the, and then almost uh, almo you're like more than ha more than almost complete with your installations okay second uh, you have to have an ipad uh, a nice nicely working version of ipython notebooks okay my ipython version notebook is coming from jupiter which is actually a part of you know which is coming from anaconda python Ana anaconda python distribution you can install from the scratch as well it doesn't ma uh, no problem whichever is convenient for you guys okay and then once those are done you have to type in these commands into an r terminal or some r or some r console for instance i ha i have uh, i have a r studio installed in my laptop i can use this console over here or else you can just type control alt and then type r and then your R terminal is over here. You can you run ex you can uh, ah come on oh well or else you can just open your terminal and type and type these commands. Simple as that. So what you have to do is just copy these commands, copy this, and in the in your R terminal, paste it. R ter R console paste it and then press enter. Um, what it says, what it says is that uh, it just says that one or more of the packages that will be updated in this installation process are currently loaded. Restarting are yeah, go about with it. Just press yes. Uh, okay, I guess I guess I just have to type the type this command over here again and. Uh, you should not. You should. You won't be getting any issues. So, <coughs> okay. So what? <coughs> okay. So, anyway, so excuse me. So okay. Once you type all, type in the commands. Okay. Uh, your R pro, your R kernel will go to the internet. Uh, go to the internet in different packages and uh, will get these. Will get a lot of files. Download them and then start in compiling them and install installing them in your system once everything one and build it and the, once those are done you'll get a message something like done ir kernel and that's it once this is done you just have to install you have like the last line over here ir kernel with double colon just type install spec uh copy this and let me uh, paste it and press enter okay Right now, it for me it's showing me that error in IR kernel installation. Jupyter or IPython three has been installed, but couldn't, but could neither run Jupyter or IPython. Uh, that's because I already have IPython notebook open, opened in my, is already open, so it's it's finding difficulty. But don't worry, if you don't have it open, it'll just work, just it'll just work out fine. Okay, once the um. Where was I? Yeah. Once this is done, your IPython notebook is ready. Now to open it is, uh, uh, your, I mean, your notebook is ready with R, R kernel. So what do you have to do is that you just you just have to type con uh, control R T, and then type IPython notebooks, and you have to ju you just have to press enter. Now if I press enter, I already have an IPython notebook open. But anyway, anyway, your IPython notebooks will open like this. In from which what you have to do is that uh, it's it's fairly simple. It's fairly simple. I already have them open over here. To create a new file, new pro, uh, you create a new notebook. All you have to type is that click here, click new, and if your installation is right, you'll get a notebook like you'll you sh you'll get a notebook like this. It says like create a no new notebook with R. Okay, and I'm using Python 3 as my default Python in my laptop, so it's showing Python 3 as well as R. Okay, so in your system, in your laptop or in your system, if you have Python 2, it'll show Python 2 and R over here. And then if I just want R kernel over here, so I click this, and I get a new notebook over here, which I can rename it and save, no problem with that. And then, let's see, if I want to type R commands, it's fairly simple now. If I just type X, as I, X as assign to value R5. 
y is assigned to the value 7 and then z, z is actually um, um, is assigned to the is assigned to the value uh, x plus y when I print z if everything goes well it should be 12 and if I just press shift enter and there you have it 12 not only this you can make and develop functions uh, you can call uh, you can call large, large amount of values inside our, our kernel okay and that's about it and here's the only thing you have to keep in mind if you do not know which kernel your sy your system is working with look at look at look at the top right corner over here okay if you're using PyPython no if you're using a Python kernel you'll have the Python symbol over here the Python name and the version written over here on the other hand if you're using uh, some other uh, kernel you should have the kernel symbol and the, and the kernel symbol and the programming language for instance I have this is actually uh, uh, though it's an IPython notebook it's actually it's actually running under R, R programming this is R programming so I have the R programming symbol over here and the programming name over here simple as that okay and now uh, other than that everything else uh, no, no, everything else is exactly the same as, as any IPython notebook so you can also have the feature to download it as uh, uh, IPython notebook or R file, HTML file, markdown, PDF, restructured text so on and so forth okay and that's that's the thing you can just proceed with it and go on and uh, just for com just for some completions just for some completion sakes okay and uh, uh, this this is not the only kernel available in it and you're using IPython notebooks you can have other programming languages installed as well for instance if you go to this link github.com inside IPython 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 wiki IPython kernels for other languages if you click go to this link it should take me to this link over here and if you look at it you just have like uh, you have uh, the IPython uh, notebooks available for several several different programming languages. You have different kernel kernels for several programming languages. For instance, you have one for Python, that's obvious. You have one for Julia, GHC, which is for Haskell, and for there's for one there's one for Ruby, and there's one for Node, uh, JavaScript, CoffeeScript, C Sharp, R, uh, um, F Sharp, Go, Scala, Erlang, Torch, Elixir. Perl, PHP, Octave, Scilab, MATLAB, so on and so forth. You just have plenty, plenty of kernels available. Even you have kernels available for Scala, R, and several others. Okay, even you have a kernel even for GNU, Plot, C++ as well. So even for Python. How about that? Now, how do I how do I go about installing all this? It's very simple. What you have to do is just pick a kernel that you want to like. For in, like you like, for instance, let's say I want uh, Scilab kernel, for instance. So I right click on Scilab and go to this link over here. And here it says these are the files over here. And it will say that okay, a Jupyter kernel for Scilab. And then I just have to follow the installation procedure over here. And how do I use it? I just have to use with this. And that's about it. Now the advantage advantage is you not only have you not only have a notebook here you also have features for the console for instance if I were to type control alt I just have to type by I Python uh, console uh, Qt console okay usually if I type I Python Qt console I'll just get uh, I, I, I just get I Python I mean I Python console over here which is which is quite na natural isn't it which is quite natural on the other hand on the other hand if i type ipython qt console and then type kernel and then type r watch um, i guess it's i r oh there you have it uh, okay i messed up if i just type i r and this I I have an iPy uh, IR kernel running for me. Now this is now this is R programming inside I inside uh, IPython IPython. How in how good is how good is that? Okay, and you can also have a normal console normal console as well. So that's about it. 
this way you can have a look at you can install any program any uh, programming kernel in ipython notebooks and have a look at it so which one which whichever you prefer you can have a look at it okay and that's for the sake of completion and uh, that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial thank you guys for watching and uh, if you guys want to have uh, if you want to type this comments I'll, you can just uh, pause the screen and type this so no problem no uh, it won't be that it's not that it's not a very long pro uh, line so it's not that difficult so don't worry about it so i'm just okay uh, that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial uh, thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time till then take care